Mm-hmm. Where the music at, Tom? I'm just, just hold on. Sorry, I was getting distracted by her eyes. <laughs> oh, well, and we're back. Um, that's how we're opening that one. I want you to base. Still not that. quite the same. Wait, hang on. Both do it at the same time. Wait, wait, hang on. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh. There we go. I'll base boost that. Cool. Can you deep fry this? Oh, wait. Oh. Sure, mate. Nice. Nice. All right. You know what? You know what? what? No, 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 no. You know what? You know what? Wait, where is it? Sick of you. Uh, excuse me. Uh, no, stop right there. <laughs> stop that. Melon. We just Pineapple. finished the first episode. I mean, no, with the, um, uh, the. We just finished talking last about. Last week. Last we week did. we were talking about Polara. Polara. Yes. The first Not song. Not that which... we just finished talking about. Ah, what a drop. I mean, I'm just recalling from last week when we were talking, oh, yes. not five minutes ago. Yeah. Um, that gig with the Polara gig, release gig. Uh, I, we had the guys from Carry the Crown playing with us. Um, you're going to get cooled down, mate. You can't. You can't oh, is that, that is that what happened? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got, I got told off by Discord. Oh, no, um, I did. Oh, no. Cool down 20 seconds. Oh, no. Um... So, because uh, obviously they're a lot more poppier than us. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, when when that drop hit in the cat list. Well, they didn't know that was the name of it, but they're like, when that drop hit, it's like, yeah. And I remember when that when we did that. It was, oh, yeah. Still a good it, one. That, it's... that this is the song I see. If I envision where I want to take, because I see us playing this this bit here in the song, and like, you know, like an O2 Academy. Yeah, cool. Choir rising like up from the background at this point. People oh, loving strings, it. Strings, strings coming up from the background here. Yeah, maybe yeah. still on the backings, but um, nah, 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 nah. On where I felt like I know. it was, it was the sound that I was wanting to make with with the band, and you you can see it in the f- future songs where it becomes a lot more epic, more grandiose. Yes, the grandiose um, moments do tend to come hot and fast in. Our music, particularly yeah. now, particularly now, 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 now. But, uh, this one was, uh, yes. So going off what the approach of Polaro, because this was written, this was actually the first song we ever wrote with the band as as divided by design. Technically, um, uh. And it was, I was still using the approach of take some, some other people's songs and try rewrite it, basically. Um, and this one was very much Welcome Home and Absalom by mm. Periphery. Like that ending, I wanted to make something like that. Yeah. Because um, I, I love having the stick fade off into strings, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's. I remember this was the first rehearsal we we ever had as a band. We we had to <laughs> you restart. We had to. We 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 entered the room and then we already had this riff, uh, the beginning riff, and then the original drummer was like, "Oh, I'm gonna have to. I won't be able to play this without a double kick." It was a lot slower at the time as well. Um. But he then went off to get that, and as in the time he went to get the kick drum, which, or the kick pedal, which was in his flat, which was literally next to the college, and then he came back down, uh, back to the practice room. I'd written the bit because uh, I was just messing around. I was like, oh, that's that's well cool. I was really into tap tapping at the time. That's why a lot of these early songs are really tapping heavy. Yeah. Um. Because I think I just like watched some guy on Instagram once. I was like, oh, "That's kind of cool. I'll learn it." And then I, <laughs> the thing is, I'll I'll see someone. It's like the thumping and all that. Uh, I'll I'll watch them do it, and then I think somewhere in my head, because when when I used to write songs for at school, um, 
it was like I don't have a seven string or an eight or an eight string. I'll make my own thing with this. So that's how I started writing music. It was like I can't write a Dream Theater song with a seven string. I've only got a six string guitar. I'll just write my own thing using those ideas. So I think when I saw like the tapping stuff, not that I do it any different to anyone else, but I didn't really learn anyone else's tapping uh, uh, passages apart from like the, you know, the the one fingered one, like um, the multi finger tapping stuff yeah. was more. Uh, I'd like see someone on Instagram be like, "Oh, that's cool," and then I'd just figure out how to do it, and then I'd make ideas of it. So that's where the Polaro one came from. And then the, the catalyst was all tapping. Basically, the first half of that song is tapping. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of tapping. And then, like, it's not really that complicated of a song, really. The the drop is just like power chords with a ninth uh, on it. Like the Dream Fit, I call it the Dream Fit power chord. It, I think, a lot of people also refer to. Oh, it what the the what the 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 root? Yeah, the, just the like the diagonal and the ninth the. Ninth, the that one, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. um, it, it, it adds a bit more character to the just a power chord. Um, uh, and then the which is playing now was uh, it was literally we wrote it all in that one rehearsal, um, and we we got this this riff going. Yeah, just see. And then I, I was like, oh, it would be so clever if I took this 6-8 riff, the tapping riff, and then put it over 4-4. <laughs> so it doesn't line up properly. No one's ever done that type of thing. Before. Well, I mean, oh, I, I at, this, at this point, I didn't really know. I worked with, like, time signature blo like blocking blocks of it. But I didn't really delve too much into cross rhythms and the poly rhythms. Because I didn't really listen to my sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, that's where everyone gets it, or periphery, but by proxy, much sugar. <laughs> you know? um, yeah. So, so the the so I, I was I'd put that over the top. So like I was making trying to make progressive metal like periphery without. Well, I'd know periphery at the time, but like all these other ones without knowing it, if that made sense. Mm. So I, a lot of my background was like power metal and Coheed and Cambria and and stuff like that and Dream Theater, so which was more straight, well not straightforward, but um, there was a style in which you'd write those rhythms and stuff, yeah. and then it was then taking that and then applying for the later stuff, applying more of the modern progressive metal um, music, I guess. Uh, yeah, I remember recording the strings for that because like, they're real strings, not not BBC Symphony Orchestra as we use now, okay. which sound good, I think anyway. But uh, we got an actual player. Can't remember what their name is. I'd I'd written the part, and then I think we scored it out as a band, and then we got we got the. But that was like the best bit of the recording for the song, the original version. This is the the re-recorded one we did in 2020 yeah. which also uh, has to be jigging done on the bass doesn't it this one because i think yeah because the original bass intro sounded really horrible yeah i think well, they, they actually they compressed it didn't they or no like, they, really they put a filter on it i think they put some kind of filter on it to i guess achieve the type of sound that's in this one but they just completely destroyed it like there was yeah. just no there was no high-end clarity at all it was just completely muffled like that um yeah th th this one as well was especially production was uh where he was like i knew what i wanted yeah but i i'm obviously not as skilled as as, as you or anyone else we've got doing them yeah, so it's, it's hard to convey that but it was like the ending the guitar isn't the main bit it's the piano yeah. and the and the synths and then the strings um because that that piano motif at this point when we got to recording it i i'd had a i had a pretty strong idea of where i wanted to take the band and um i knew that piano motif was going to be something that would pop up a lot yeah. um 
and I really wanted to make sure that was a highlight. But the original recording, you can hardly hear it. It's there. Um, yeah, yeah you, particularly you particularly at the end in that final fade out in that final fade out section. Yeah, you could barely hear it at all because I remember listening to it, and I think I'd heard. Had I heard it before it was released, like a demoed version of it? Yeah, I, I think, think so. you made a recorded version before you released it. Yes, co- yes, because you sent a version to me, which was all of the st- all of the stems and everything. I think, but you could hear it all quite a lot more clearly. You could hear the piano, you could hear the synths, and then the, yeah, that recording came out, and it was just not none of it was there, like the twiddly twiddly synth that kind of comes in and out. Which yeah, is, yeah, it wasn't there. And the tw- and the plonk of the piano wasn't there. Yeah, I mean a lot of them were in the final he, bit. It was they read he that. redid a lot of the synths for the original recording, that and I preferred the demo ones because it like for this this song was so like meticulously composed. Yeah, uh, it was like I, I, this is what I want. I want to make sure these sections pop up. So the synth choices were really deliberate, and it wasn't just I'd whack this into. Yeah. To, what, um, kind what's, of, what synths yeah. did you actually end up using in that? In this? I use the rubbish Reaper ones. Hey, but they're not rubbish. Take that. No, they're not rubbish. No, they're amazing. They're, they're fantastic. Amazing. They are amazing. They were they're used amazing. in every I still song. use Synth 1. I still use it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is in the latest album. Yeah, it should be finished. in every album. It should be. I, I can't get it on Mac one. though. That's the problem. Oh, the, the good one. The, like the, the one on Reaper. The OG. The yeah, yeah. One, the go-to. I know I had to use that one. But... Yeah. This is where I was like, I know what this band's going to be now. And uh, I f- followed. I f- I, you know, that, that motif keeps popping up. It didn't pop up in the latest composition, but uh, I'm going to bring it back. I've decided it's coming back. Can I, put it, can I put it in part two of the song that I've done? If you want. Are you going to write a part two? I put yeah. a part one, so I've got to, haven't I? I've kind of dug myself into that's, a hole. Yeah, why, why don't we do a dream theater where that's part one and we then write an album that's part two? Yeah. And uh, with that. That's-